Kim, um, the shooting, the last three games, you're all three lowest shooting percentages. Uh, any concerns there, or is it just about the, the type of shots you all are getting up, or maybe you're getting more up? And No, I, I don't – that doesn't concern me. Um, I just want to win. I just want to win. Um, yeah, sometimes it's um, – Maybe who's taking the shots. Maybe there's a reason for it if you break it down. But I want all of them to shoot it. I want them to be confident. You miss one, shoot another one. Um, I don't overemphasize shooting percentages as much as I emphasize field goal percentage defense. This game is one that um, you're going to have off nights. You're going to have many off nights. Um, but keep shooting it and just keep playing solid defense. Just talked to Kayla for a little while, so I got a couple of on, on her. Just uh, the patience in her game, have, how have you seen that kind of evolve uh, in the limited time you've had with her? Well, she's our all SEC, SEC performer. And to go back to what you said, Jim, you know, she hasn't gotten off to the best of starts with her uh, field goal percentage, but she wins ball games for you. And so um, she's just so deserving of anything. Uh, she gets. In fact, I said it many times, I don't think she gets honored enough. Uh, she does a lot of things very, very well. And to have the kind of year she's having her last year and uh, be as unselfish as she is at times, uh, because she's had to do a lot for this program the last couple of years, and she doesn't have to do as much. She can and does in certain situations in the game, but she has more help around her. And... Um, She's just a patient kid. She's a positive kid. She encourages them in the timeouts. If I'm challenging them in the locker room or during a timeout, she's always the one that, you know, builds them back up. And, uh, but that's, that's to be expected from the good ones. That's to be expected from the ones that want to lead you. You said that you and her have a good rapport in games as well and that she'll that you like to challenge her by not naming the play but giving her the results that you want and she has to come up with the play. But then that she's also able to kind of throw something at you and, and you digest it. And well, I played the position. And I think if you don't have your point guard take ownership and understand, I can drop dead on that sideline and you should be able to go win a ball game for us. You should be able to make the right calls. You should be able to get the ball in the hands of the right people. You've been taught how to defend. And that's how I view the position that she plays. And uh, that's how important it is. Um, she's going to get all the credit in the world, but she's going to be the first one I get on and get take a lot of the blame for what others don't do. Because when you're the quarterback out there, you're responsible for a lot of people. You got to know every position on the floor. You got to start the first pass to get into the offense. Um, so yeah, she and I have connected quickly. Connected quickly. Kim, in uh, the converse of the first question I had, your free throw shooting, uh, you've had your three best three free throw shooting efforts the last three games. And I know you say you stay out of that. You don't mess with it, tinker with it too much. What is uh, responsible for that? Is it better focus? or We have gotten to the line all year. I've said it, keep getting to the line. Keep Just keep getting to the line. It's like with anything, if you just keep getting there, you're going to eventually make them. And uh, I've been proud that we we go to the line a lot. And, um, you know, I don't have a magic word to give you other than free throw shooting probably is mental more than anything. It's repetition more than anything. And uh, we shoot a lot of free throws. We don't overemphasize it. I don't make them feel stressed when they go to the line. I tell them, just like anything, step up there and shoot it. And um, on Jalen Cherry, um, I know a lot of these players are the best coming out of high school, so confidence isn't always a problem. But with her, it's it's really made a difference. Uh, she she said it, and she said you helped bring that out in her. What, uh, as a coach, um, I know that's very important. But uh, when did you start to see that, or did you always know that how important confidence was? Not just practice, but but making a player feel like they're strong mentally. Well, you know, coaches tend to get blamed for a lot of things. If a kid is not doing good, it's always the coach's fault, right? Um, confidence comes from success. And when your team is successful and you do some good things and you're successful, that confidence grows. And um, a lot of that has to do with identifying roles 
I remember the first one of the first team meetings I asked who's the best defensive perimeter player in this room. Without question, she raised her hand. Not only did she say she was, she said she wanted to be. So there's your role. Now you go and play that role as best you can. Let me figure out how to get you some points on the other end. Unbelievable, beautiful jump shot, athleticism, can leap out of the gym for her size. Uh, but her confidence um, probably comes from playing time. Her confidence comes from our team having success. And, and she's having success. Um, I don't know the history, but I've been told numerous times by y'all and by fans on how she would always get down on herself in years past. And we've had a few of those moments, and I don't ignore it. I address it because I will take you out of a game over no defense and body language. I'll never take you out of a game unless you take bad shots. You don't come out from missed shots. It's body language and defense. And so you, you make sure you don't let her revert back to old habits that are not positive. Uh, so she, she has been a big part of what we do. I think those guards are about as unselfish as they come. I think our guards uh, make our post players better. I think our post players are playing their role as, as best they can. And, uh, and we're just, we just have had this kind of season, guys. I don't think we've gotten too high, nor have we ever gotten too low. We've been right here. Just look at the season and look at the losses. We've stayed right here. And um, that's a lot of coaching um, – coaching them up. That's a lot of motivating. That's a lot of senior leadership. Uh, There's so many reasons why you've just stayed consistent for, what, 25 basketball games. And staying away from injuries. Staying away from injuries. Injuries can basically change the whole um, look if you have injuries. Yeah, Coach, Mississippi State um, is one for the last five. They have Kentucky tonight. Just a uh, what do you know about them and how, how they match up? Yeah, I know a lot about Mississippi State. We play them Thursday. Um, what a tremendous job that coach has done. He's an interim coach as well. They lose their best player, who was at the time the leading scorer in the SEC, Jackson. And then they go on to win four out of five after she leaves. Uh, very similar to Florida. Uh, they push the ball in transition. They'll shoot the three. They'll go five guards sometimes. Um, just a lot of movement, a lot of dribble penetration. Uh, we have them uh, size-wise, but that's not always great, depending on matchups defensively. Uh, going to Starkville is, is going to be extremely um, difficult because they do support women's basketball. Uh, Vic Schaefer did a, a great job there in building the fan base, and uh, I know he's not there anymore, but they've – grown to appreciate women's basketball. They're, they're seventh, I think, in the league today. They play Kentucky tonight in a makeup game. Um, they're good. If they continue to do what they're doing, they're potentially going to be one of the NCAA teams. Yeah, it's, uh, on the other day, your inside game, you said you didn't get enough out of them. But uh, what do you want out of them as far as points and rebounds, say, in, in a game? And also, um, are they not getting the ball enough inside because they're not posting like you want them to post? <coughs> when I say I'm not getting enough out of them, I'm getting everything out of them defensively and rebounding. But when you had the game before last, one post had one touch, one post had two touches. Whose fault is that? Is that your fault because you're not demanding the ball or is it, is it the perimeter doesn't have confidence in you? we got to address that. And it was addressed um, before the Mississippi game. And then you saw how well they did in the Mississippi game, Ole Miss. And then the next game, we reverted back to uh, times that they were open in there and we didn't throw them the ball for whatever reason, and you show it to them on film. And then you also say, but did you really want it? Look how you posted. Did you really want it, or were you just there posting? So it's a combination of both. Um, we just have to keep making everybody understand not one player – not one player um, can be hesitant, can lose their confidence. You just got to keep playing, got to keep plugging along. 
Coach, this is that time of year where you could get caught daydreaming about March Madness, NCAA tournament, hosting games in this building, all those different things. Uh, your resume is very good at this point. How do you balance that motivation with them to kind of dangle that carrot, but also, you know, sometimes when you think big picture, then you slip up and don't handle what's in front of you? Well, you get real with them. You say to them what you just said, okay? You say to them what you just said, and then you say, do you realize – that if you win the remaining games, that you'll finish second in this league behind the number one team in the country that you played down to the wire, that would be pretty awesome. Now, if it doesn't happen, it doesn't. But you really control that. You control that. You don't have to sit here and say, oh, I hope so-and-so beats so-and-so, and I hope. You control it from here out. And if it doesn't happen, make sure that if you walk off that floor and defeat that team, really, really had to play good. And um, you talk about it, but I, I don't have a team that is that arrogant to even act like that. I mean, think about it. What have they done the last two, three years? This is exciting to them. They don't want to stop feeling the way they feel. And so... You mention it to them. You give them these little goals now to, to shoot for and uh, just keep them doing what they're, they've been doing. Keep them doing what they've been doing. I said this in our losses, and I think I said it to you guys. We lose to two in a row. And I came in here with a smile on my face, and I said, it's okay. The sky is not falling. When was the last time you ever saw a team celebrate on the floor beating LSU? That says enough, right? So you just keep playing, keep coaching. Don't, don't ever let them let up. Uh, don't overdo it in practice. Get in that film room and study everything you can about people. And um, let's see where, where we can land. Let's see what happens. Hey, Kim, uh Scoring, scoring defense, field goal percentage, field goal percentage defense, rebounding, rebounding defense. You're in the top five in the SEC in all those stats. Uh, the only other team that is is South Carolina. So what what does that, if anything, say to you about, uh, about what, you, what you're doing at both ends of the floor? Well, it tells you what coaches emphasize. A lot of coaches come from a different train of thought, Scott. Not everybody emphasizes those things. I learned – from the Leon Barmores and the Pat Summit that um, you better defend and you better rebound. The scoring's going to come and go. You're going to have good nights, bad nights, all those things. Um, and I'm never going to change my philosophy on those things because that's just ingrained in you as a basketball mind. Guys, you got to guard people. And I know, I know that's, not, um, that's not fun. Guarding people hurts. Your thighs burn. You get tired. Um, everybody wants to watch the offensive end. Um, but as you said, Jim, we're not going to shoot it good every night. So just try to remain consistent. We've won some games where people shot the ball pretty good against us. Uh, but if you can just keep them below 40%, you stand a chance in every game. And it's really, really important on the road. You can get motivated a little bit with crowds cheering for you at home and hit a big shot when you're tired. It doesn't always happen on the road. Um, so I just think it's it's the mindset of who leads you. And uh, I've had many, many practices where we don't pick up a ball. I've had many practices where we don't pick up a ball. And um, I hope that continues because we still have a lot of basketball to be played. What, do we have four left? One or two, three in the conference tournament, and then it's here. The NCAA playoffs are here. I want to talk about a sellout Sunday. I'm telling you, it's right there. It's right there to have a sellout. It would not surprise me in the least if we don't have a sellout Sunday because tickets are coming and going quickly right now, or going quickly right now, and uh, people are buying them, if nothing else, to give out to different places. Uh, wouldn't that be awesome? in your first year to have a sellout, 13,000 people here. And uh, I think it's going to happen. I will be shocked if it doesn't.
Uh, Kim, you've been asked multiple times about Alexis Morris this year, but she's just coming. She just got announced as SEC Player of the Week. Had 25 to go along with Kayla's. What really has jumped about her growth this year? Um, well, I'll, this is my first year to have her because uh, I didn't have her, you know, but for a short period of time at Baylor. Uh, she she would probably tell you just the mere fact that she's playing. I think she came off the bench at A and M, and uh, just getting in the flow. I think that uh, you're seeing her blend in with Kayla Pointer uh, and Kayla blending in with her pretty darn good. Um, Alexis is the same Alexis I knew when she was seventh grade. She can shoot the ball. She can hit the mid-range jumper. She'll hit that perimeter three if needed. Uh, has uh, quickness. She's, you know, light on her feet. Uh, she's getting better defensively uh, of late. We've been putting her on some, some pretty darn good guards in our league, and I think she's done, uh, done pretty darn good. And, uh, and again, that's, that's her confidence. That's her comfort level. And um, I think she said it best in a text to me. She said, Coach, you brought the love back to me. She, you make, you're making me love this game again. I think she just kind of took a twisted, twisted road after I dismissed her at Baylor, and um, and she's got that love back in her heart about about the game. Well, I think you've seen it. <laughs> They've won 21 basketball games, and they haven't done it by themselves. Uh, Alexis is maturing. Um, Kayla has always made good suggestions to me when it's just us one-on-one -on -one in the course of a game. But Alexis, particularly one that comes to mind, was in the A&M game about, Coach, you know, so-and-so needs a lift. You know, she's about to cry, things like that. And I think Alexis Morris, you know, mature like that, and I'll just wink at her like she, she cares. She cares about her teammates. She cares about winning. Um, that's just a sign of growing up. Coach, you mentioned uh, wanting to sell out Sunday. Uh, did you talk to Sue Gunner like in 05 and 04? Did you have any kind of – that was the, the one time or a couple times it ever happened here. No, uh, I've, I've talked to some people actually that would see me eating lunch at these little hole-in-the-wall places when the season was starting, and they were like, I remember we used to shoot airplanes – to try to go in to win a car or something, <laughs> and I just would listen. And I just thought, what great idea, but I hope I don't have to give out free tickets or shoot airplanes. Uh, kind of like I told Baylor, the loudest the crowd was at Baylor when I got there was when they would give out free pizza. <laughs> I, I wanted that gone. I wanted the, the crowd to be loud because we were winning, because we, we had put a product on that floor and – uh, I don't want free tickets given out for this. Some some coaches believe in that. Whatever it takes, you do. But I want people to pay to come see a product on the floor that's very good. And if we can get 13000 in here, the students, um, you know, I've I, I just fraternities, talk to them all. Get out here. Get out here. I know we have a 1 o'clock uh, baseball game, right? Well, by Sunday, you've already seen baseball play on Friday and Saturday, right? So you can go watch baseball for about five innings and then come on down to Nicholson and watch a two-hour game because after Sunday, you only have one more left. And we've got the rest of the season to watch baseball, and I'll be the first one out there watching them. Do you remember when they used to drop a curtain out here and cover up the whole side? Of no, the but I, I can remember a lot of places do that, and they still do it. Uh, I've seen it at volleyball games. I've seen it at a lot of places. Um, you know, that there used to be a saying, was it Winston cigarettes? You've come a long way, baby. Virginia to Slim. Virginia Slim. See, I see who the smokers are in here. Uh-huh, you smokers. See, I was close. Winston, Virginia Slims. But how's it go to get where you got to today? Well, hey, we've come a long way. And I hope when I'm done and I'm sitting in that rocking chair, uh, I can look back and go, there won't be any more black curtains uh, that people, you know, can value what they see on the floor. But you got to win. People don't want to come if you're not winning. People want to see winners 
And uh, if you're not winning, at least they want to see that you're competitive. And I just think that's what I've uh, been able to enjoy this year is that 25 basketball games, we were competitive. Arkansas, we got uh, put in a deep hole quickly, but we didn't quit. That could have been a 25-point loss, and we cut it to 14. So, uh, yeah, it's good. Virginia Slims. All right. I sing in the shower. I sing when I'm eating. I sing in the car. Um, all my friends, they just put stuff in their ears because I can't carry a tune. But, you know, I just, I don't know. Kind of weird, isn't it? Huh? I don't have any other hobbies. I don't golf. I don't drink. I don't drink coffee. I don't smoke. What, what else is there for me to do? I know lyrics to songs, and it's really strange. It's songs that are just f from all over, country, gospel. Every now and then I'll do a little rap, and every now and then I'll do a little pop. I don't know. I don't know. It's strange, isn't it? Huh? Thank you, guys. Appreciate y'all.